right, so the name of this talk is I Can Do All Things Through God Who Strengthens Me. This song is Fearless. It's by Claudia Carawan. She wrote it herself. It's an original. When you uh, get the link to it, you'll see that she also has a whole PowerPoint presentation with beautiful pictures that go along with it. It's just wonderful. So we're going to be talking about the fact that God's strength shows up in different ways, uh, that there are different kinds of strength. But what if our definition of strength is wrong? What if we need to find a new way to think about it? We're going to be talking about a better way to think about resilience uh, in unleashing inner strength, how stoicism defeats weakness, eight stoic habits for becoming our best selves. We will be talking about values in action, uh, some research that was done on uh, psychological and spiritual and physical strength that we have and all of the values that we um, believe in. Uh, we will, of course, be having scripture. We choose what values we live by, what we believe in, where we get our strength from. God gives us the strength to make choices so that we can be our best and highest selves. God has given us the strength to use our minds, our hearts, and our inner knowing to determine what is right for us as individuals. The strength of character to do what we know is right for ourselves and also for the betterment of others. So we're going to talk about this Values in Action. So the VIA Institute, Values in Action Institute, has been around since about 2004. Uh, some of you may know the work of Marty Seligman, Dr. Martin Seligman. He was part of that group. And so what they did was they put together an inventory. It is worldwide. It is international about the values that people have. Uh, it is a nonprofit. It is for the scientific pursuit of the understanding of the dimensions of human goodness to encourage the development of the tools and practice that will shift the direction of humankind for the better. So it's broken into six categories, wisdom, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, and transcendence. So wisdom includes things like creativity, so creative art and music and coming up with ideas, which will result in something worthwhile. It talks about curiosity, judgment, the love of learning and perspective. The next is humanity, that is kindness, love, and social intelligence. The next is justice, that is fairness, leadership, and teamwork. Next is temperance, which includes forgiveness, humility, prudence, self-regulation. And the spirituality part comes under transcendence, which is the appreciation of beauty and excellence, gratitude, hope, and humor. And then the last one that we'll be talking about quite a bit today is courage. So courage is broken down into four parts, bravery, honesty, perseverance, and zest. So bravery is I act on my convictions and I face threats, challenges, difficulties, and pains despite any doubts and fears. There are three types of bravery. The first is physical bravery, and that you can see in people like firefighters and policemen and soldiers. The next is psychological bravery, and that is when we are facing the painful aspects of ourselves. And the last is moral bravery, which is speaking up for what's right, even if it is an unfavorable opinion. So part of that is honesty, and that says I am honest to myself and to others. I try to present myself and my reactions accurately to each person, and I take responsibility for my actions. A person of integrity acts consistently across all areas of our life. So that means that you're not one person when you're at home and another person when you're at work and another person when you're at church, right? You're the same person all the time. That's what integrity is all about. Accurately representing your internal states, your intentions and commitments, both publicly and privately, you take responsibility for your feelings and behavior. So the next part of that is perseverance. Perseverance says I persist toward my goals despite obstacles, discouragements, or disappointments, sticking with things, being hardworking, finishing what is started despite barriers and obstacles, a voluntary continuation. And that's what we're going to be talking about the most, that it's a voluntary continuation. You make a choice whether to stay with this goal or to let it go. Of goal-directed action despite challenges, it requires both effort for a task and duration to keep the task up. So we're going to discuss healthy and unhealthy perseverance, because the way that we're going to be looking at strength today says that maybe some of the perseverance that we have is actually not all that healthy. So we're going to be talking about letting that go. And the last of the categories is zest. I feel vital and full of energy. I approach life feeling activated and enthusiastic. I am excited to get up in the morning. Life is an adventure. It is the dynamic strength directly related to physical and psychological wellness. 
So we're going to move into stoicism. Stoicism is about overcoming obstacles um, without complaining or or voicing your despair to everybody. And I will have a little caveat that there are times when it's very important that you voice your sadness or your despair to someone in particular, but it's not about going out into the world and telling everybody how miserable you are all the time, right? That's what stoicism is. So we're going to be talking about the fact that we all face challenges it is how we respond to them that makes the difference. Stoicism is a school of philosophy that was in ancient Greece and Rome. It was started in 300 BCE, the very first Stoic was someone named Zeno. Stoic's goal is to reach eudaimonia, that is being at peace and happy with life. Identified the path to achieving this is by practicing certain virtues, such as courage and temperance, and living according to the laws of nature. Stoics are known for teaching that virtue is the only good. So your behavior, how you treat other people in the world, how you act is the only good that is, and that the external pleasures are neither good nor bad. They just really don't actually matter that much. Since the virtue is sufficient for you being who you are, is sufficient for happiness, they say a sage would be emotionally resilient to bad things happening. So the definition is endurance of pain or hardship without display of feelings and without complaint. And again, be aware, I'm saying that you should definitely display your feelings to special people in your lives. You just don't make that your way of life to go out there complaining all the time. So the virtue is based on knowledge. The wise live in harmony with divine reason that governs nature. So there are four pillars of stoicism, wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. And notice that all four are also listed in the values of the actions that we talked about. These are known as the cardinal virtues. They are the leaders of Stoicism believe that you could lead to a better, happier, and more fulfilling life. Stoicism is the definition of courage, the state of remaining strong and in control of one's emotions no matter what life throws at you. So they divided courage into five categories, endurance, confidence, high-mindedness, cheerfulness, and industriousness about remaining positive and productive in the face of adversity. It's not about eliminating fear, but it's about getting past it. It provides a powerful framework for the development of inner strengths and resilience. It teaches us to focus on what is in control and to accept what is not in our control. We become immune to the unpredictability of life, and we learn to accept discomfort knowing that it can be an opportunity for growth. We focus on our inner life. We are less attached to the material possessions, social validation, and external success, and we find fulfillment within ourselves. It encourages us to live in the present and focus on gratitude. In a world of instant gratification, Stoicism reminds us of the power of patience and resilience. So I found someone who wrote the eight stoic habits for becoming your best self. Uh, his name is Ryan Holiday. And he says that your habits, what you do every single day over and over and over again are what define you and who are you day in and day out. That's going to change your belief system. We are a product of our daily choices. So Seneca was one of the major stoic philosophers. And he said, life without design is erratic. The practical habits for everyone can be learned. So the first one they talk about is waking up early so that you can have the whole day ahead of you. We talk about winning the morning all the time, um, that you spend some time with a journal, that you do some writing, that you think about the value you can create for other people and for the world, that you concentrate like a Roman. So Marcus Aurelius was also a very well-known Stoic, and he says, concentrate like the thing you are doing is the last thing that you will ever do in your life. I think that's a really nice way to look at it. So when you're there, be present. So what we talk about all the time, Eckhart Tolle is all about, be here in the Nile, be present, understand exactly what you're doing right now when you're doing it. Concentrate, the thing you are doing is the last thing that you will ever be doing, work for the common good. And then he says, at the end of the day, put your day up for review and ask yourself, what could I have done better? And what can I improve? And what difference did I make either in my life or somebody else's life? The next one he talks about is meditate on mortality. This is not about being morbid. It's about we're all going to die. Not taking yourself or your work too personally, having humility. Again, Marcus Aurelius wrote meditations in 167 AD, long, long, long time ago. And he says, the eternal changing nature of the universe and the acceptance of death is what is going to allow you to lead a peaceful life. 
It also reminds us that since we could die at any moment, we should live to the life to the fullest while we can every single moment. Having some humility about what you do, about your place in the world is a sign of a healthy, well-adjusted maturity. It's about keeping perspective and not letting your ego get out of control. The number three thing he says to do is take wandering walks. Seneca says the mind must be given over to wandering walks. It's not just about the physical exercise, but also about letting the mind have a rest, getting outside into nature, time practicing gratitude and appreciation. Number four is this concept called love your fate. You see challenges as a chance to get better and a chance to grow. Love your life where it is today, exactly as it is. Say, this is a challenge. This was chosen for me. I'm going to choose to deal with it, and I'm going to not let it break me. So this whole concept is called amor fati. Amor fati is a Latin phrase, which means love of fate or love of our fate. It teaches us to accept and embrace the events of our life, both the good and the bad, without resistance or resentment. Cherish the present moment. Each experience contributes to the wider experience of life. The goal is to live a life of harmony, resilience, and contentment. The proactive mindset that seeks wisdom and growth in all situations. Amar Fate is accepting and embracing everything that has happened, is happening, and is yet to happen. Number five is think about failure. So I'm going to give you a little caveat to this, but they're really into preparing for and having a plan. So it's not, not like you want to focus on doing everything wrong, but they what they teach is that if you're prepared for failure, you'll be okay when it happens, as opposed to being really upset when something happens. You'll be able to handle it better than if you're surprised. Stoics would rather be, quote, pleasantly surprised that the negative thing didn't happen than unpleasantly surprised when it does happen. So again, I don't really agree with this. I believe that we should focus on the positive so that you can get more positive and it will get bigger. You create on focusing a positive outcome. But I do understand with the theory of it. It's sort of like having a go bag. So like my 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 wonderful nephew just had a baby. So they had a go bag. So they were ready. As soon as the water broke, they were ready to run out the door. So they teach you also that if you live in a hurricane place or a place that has a lot of fires or something, you should always have a bag ready with like your essentials in it. So that's kind of what the story Stoicism is teaching that you should always be ready so that you're not thrown off guard when something horrible happens. The next thing they talk about is the morning routine. And again, waking up early is really important to them. They say, don't touch the phone. His response, his suggestion is don't touch the phone for at least the thir first 30 minutes that you're awake. I 100% believe in that. I don't touch the phone for the first hour. Um, everybody knows that I'm just not going to. I need to get myself centered. I need to do my prayer. I need to do my meditation. I need to have my coffee. Like I'm, I'm not going to respond in a way that is helpful to people unless I'm centered. And so I don't touch my phone for the first hour of a day. Um, then he says, do some exercise, walk, journal, do the most important creative task of your day first, he says, when you have all of your energy and you've got yourself centered and calm. He eats after that. I'm not so sure I would wait to eat that long. He doesn't eat till like 11 in the morning. I would rather get my day going and have something to eat and, and then do my creative work. But his main thought is do your creative work first and then do all of your administrative paying the bills answering the emails all that kind of stuff number seven he says that's critical to having a well-balanced and happy life is make time to read he says all people have time you just have to make a decision that it's important to you to read so i did some research and i came up with these facts reading improves the brain connectivity it increases your vocabulary and your comprehension. It empowers you to empathize with others. It aids in sleep readiness. It reduces your stress. It lowers your blood pressure and your heart rate. It fights the symptoms of depression and it prevents cognitive disorder. So again, pick things that are gonna be uplifting, that are gonna inspire you. A lot of people read right before they go to bed. It's a way to sort of calm your brain down and focus yourself on some positive things before you go to sleep. And the number eight that he says is stop putting stuff off. Marcus Aurelius says, you could be good today, but instead you choose tomorrow. Epictetus says, how much longer are you going to wait to demand the best for yourself? So back in the ancient world, philosophy wasn't abstract. It wasn't theoretical. It was designed to help you live your best life.
Okay, so we're going to move on to scripture because you know me, I have to have some scripture in there and there are just tons of references to resilience. Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Second Timothy 1, 7, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Isaiah 41 10, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Ephesians 6 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Micah 7 8, rejoice not over me, O my enemy, where I fall, because I shall rise. Where I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. And James 1, 2, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith will bring steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect, complete, and lacking in nothing. So now we're going to move on to this fact that I think the way we have defined strength in our culture is maybe not the healthiest way and that maybe we could redefine it and look at it differently. We're taught to persevere against all odds, all that stuff that I just say, that no matter what happens, you overcome all the obstacles. We're gonna talk about a different way of looking about this. So this talk was given called A Better Way to Look at Resilience. It's by M.M. Washington. She is an attorney, an international keynote speaker. She wrote the books, uh, she, she's the founder of Moda Vida, and she wrote the books Rise from the Shadows, Unbreakable, and Women of Purpose. So she says she was really surprised to hear the news of the 2020 Olympics that actually happened in 2021 because of the pandemic that Simone Biles was withdrawing from certain events. As it turned out, she had lost her bearing in the middle of a vault, which could be life-threatening. So I went and I looked up all about Simone Biles and she caught what's called as the twisties. She's suffering from something called the twisties. This is not a physical ailment at all. This is not anything going wrong with her form. This is an emotional mental block that happens when she's in the air. She loses her ability to focus on where she's supposed to be landing. It's, it's suffered by gymnasts. It's called the twisties. They lose track of their position while they are in midair. And she said why this was such a big deal because she was the first one, Simone Biles was the first one to say, I'm done. Like I'm walking away from here. This is not gonna happen. Nobody else had ever in gymnastics stood up and said enough. Right now, this is enough. I need to take care of myself no matter what else anybody wants from me. And as you know, she quit and she walked away. It was thought of very, very badly around the world. Tons of people were giving opinions on social media. People were tweeting things like our national embarrassment. She is selfish and childish. The great ones find a way. She's not great because she didn't push through it. So the question is, does resilience have to look the same for each of us and look the same every single time? Resilience, persistence, perseverance, grit, mental toughness, they all have the underlying definition of pushing through, don't quit, keep going. We mean well when we say things like when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, aim for success, achieve those goals, but it's a one-sided, one way of thinking. There is another way to think about what resilience really means. We can compare people with others and what they have done before us, or we can understand that every single person is an individual who has their own needs and wants and strengths and has to make their own decisions for themselves. And if you take nothing else out of this talk, the one thought I want you to take is that God has given us the strength to hear our inner voice so that we know what's right for us. And we don't have to pay attention to what anybody else says. We got to listen to our own instincts and we got to do what is right for us. We compare people and that's unfortunate that we do that. We compare the tennis player who withdraws from the press conference due to mental health to the prince who gives up his title for the sake of his mental health and the mental health of his family. And then we say things like his brother and his father have been in the same boat and they managed to handle it. Why can't he? to the Olympic gymnast who decides to withdraw for the sake of her health, maybe even her own life, we say things like, what an embarrassment. We treasure and applaud the ones who keep pushing through and think less of the ones who quit. Our culture is one of achievement focus, urging us to keep going despite all odds. Keep pushing, we keep going because that's what resilient people do. What if our current view of resilience is wrong? What if we looked at it in a new way? What if we agreed that resilience and grit, while we do have elements of pushing through, they could also be harmful? What if resilience could be asking for help? 
leaning on other people, going to therapy. Resilience can also look like pausing, taking a break. Resilience can also look like quitting altogether. What if we redefine our perspective and look at strength differently? Pausing, taking a break, asking for help, leaning on others. These can also be huge indicators of having strength. What if we took a broader, more healthy view of what resilience is and we look at the bigger picture? We would see three things. Number one, sometimes we lose the battle to win the war. Sometimes we give up temporarily in order to have a bigger victory in the end. Number two, sometimes we have to bend in order to keep from breaking. So you think of the palm trees, the mighty oak or the pine during a really big storm is gonna fall over and break. It's gonna break in half. The pine tree, the palm tree is gonna bend so much so that it looks like it's dead. Sometimes they bend over so much that people think the palm tree is dead. Sometimes in our choice to be resilient, it might look like we have given up and let go of the struggle. We look like we've quit and like we have no more hope. The palm tree rises back up again. Even if it doesn't get back to its original state, even when it's bent, it can still stay alive and it can still thrive and it can still be healthy. Number three, sometimes being able to say I quit is a show of strength. Maybe not always about pushing through against all odds, saying I'm done, this is not working, takes belief in yourself and beliefs that you can start over and have a new and better beginning and a fresh start and a more healthy life choice. The courage to quit is grit, not always about pushing through at all odds. So in 1980, there was another gymnast from the Soviet Union named Elena Mushkina. Two weeks before the Olympics, she suffered an injury, one month after her 20th birthday. She was pressured by her coach to push through despite the injury. She said she was hesitant. Elena told her coach, I can't do this. This doesn't feel smart to me. I don't think that this is a good idea. I don't want to do this. I can't do this. And he pressured her so much that she continued training and she ended up a quadriplegic. She is now a quadriplegic. The coach wanted her to be resilient and bounce back, but it was not in her best interest. What does that mean? Resilience can mean so much more than the way we currently perceive it. It can look like pushing through. It can also look like pausing, asking for help, reassessing, making confident decisions to say no. Simon Biles, Simone Biles is now, even today, right now today, as we speak, competing again. Seven time Olympic medalist. After two nights competition, Friday night and Saturday night, she is looking to wrap up the record that will set that hopefully she will be setting tomorrow, uh, conquering, overcoming everybody else's record that's ever been sent. The gymnastic championship that she's doing right now is in San Jose. On Friday night, this five-time world all-around champion wore a dark purple leotard, and on the back, emblazoned in crystals, it said, but still I rise, referring to the poem by Maya Angelou. Two years later, she came back stronger, healthier, happier, and married. Just goes to show you. All right. So I just want to recap a little bit. We've been working for a couple of weeks on the different attributes. So the values in action, the one we started with today, wisdom, courage, humanity, justice, temperance, and transcendence. The four pillars of stoicism, wisdom, courage, temperance, and justice. The nine fruits of the spirit. I'm not sure all of you were here for the fruits of the spirit. The nine fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the sferat that we talked about last week is the supreme crown, wisdom, intelligence, love, beauty, eternity, might, strength, majesty, foundation, and kingship. And it's just amazing to me that every time I do a talk for you guys and I'm, I'm pulling together all of these threads, I don't know in advance, but they all come together and they all say the same thing. So here's what I know. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. I say that always. I actually have it on my wall. It's something that I've been saying over and over again, very, very long time, probably 20, 25 years. And sometimes I say it several times a day. And I always say it when I'm not feeling well. And it happened again this week. So I had to get a second shingle shot and I had a little bit of a reaction to it. Um, I was a little bit nauseous and I was a little bit dizzy and I, um, I just was really, really, really tired. Um, and my stomach had a little bit of distress, but I was able to look at it objectively and say, I'm not just my body. I also have my mind and my heart and my intuition. 
And so I meditated and I asked myself, what's the right thing to do? And I realized that that feeling of being off was just a little one. It wasn't a really big one. It was just a little one. And that I'm really, really grateful for this new job that I have. And then it's only five hours. And I'm like, I can do anything for five hours. And so I pushed through. But it was a very conscious decision to say, this isn't that big a deal. On other days when I'm really feeling sick, I'll call out and I'll say I'm really, really sick. So the point is, I was able to sit and meditate and say, what, what is my heart telling me? What, what are my instincts telling me? What is my body telling me? Because you need to listen to yourself and you don't always have to push through. Sometimes you push through when it's okay to push through, when you make the personal decision. And that's why I was saying before, it's about us making our own personal decisions about what we do. And so I made the personal decision. It's not that big a deal. I can go to work. So I was not about pushing through. It was about making a choice. That small, still voice inside knows what to do if we listen. Simone Biles listened. Elena Mukshina did not. We don't have to accept anyone else's judgment about what is right or wrong for us. I believe God, inside us, outside us, all around us, gives us the power to push through when we decide it's the right thing to do. All of the teachings point to wisdom, courage, integrity, and truth. For me, it's about getting quiet and asking God, my higher self, what is the right thing to do right here, right now? I think we fall into a trap when we try to live by what everybody else's standards and rules are. God has given us strength, wisdom, and backbone and grace. The grace to make mistakes and learn from them. The grace to ask for help and know it will come. The grace to not be perfect and not expect that the grace to let ourselves off the hook when we need to pause and reflect and reassess and reevaluate. I don't believe in giving up on yourself, but I do believe resting and pausing and rethinking takes strength and courage and should not be thought of as a failure. Courage and strength comes in all shapes and sizes. Letting go is sometimes the healthiest thing we can do. It takes strength and courage. Let's redefine what strength and resilience look like. Let's remember that the word courage means from the heart. God makes us brave and strong and wise, and we get to choose on a daily basis when to push hard and when to pause and rest and when to maybe let go. I can do all things through God that strengthens me, but I get to listen to that still small voice, which either says pause, rest, reassess, or you can do this because you choose to keep going. You have the strength. Let's not choose actions because we have to prove something to somebody. Let's choose because deep in our hearts, we believe it's the right thing to do. You be true to you always. And God will always give you the strength. Always. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. And so it is. Remember at all times, the power is in you. It always has been, and it always will be. Thank you.